Welcome to part 99 of a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank. Fitting the blowdown valves, modifying the axle pump bypass system by making a special T-piece and fixing the superstructure in place. In the last episode I stuck a lot of pieces of coal to an aluminium panel. Here's an aerial view of the coal in place in the bunker. I think maybe I need a little bit more but it will do for now. In this episode I have some important things to contend with. Fitting the blowdown valves was quite easy, some Loctite 542, then screw them into place using my Barco spanner. Over now to the Boxford lathe to make a fitting for the water bypass return system. On the original boiler, the feed into the boiler for the axle pump was right at the front. And if you look at the earlier episodes, you will see quite a complex system of piping from the output of the axle pump. This boiler only has two check valves, and once again very early in the series I blanked off the outlet which would normally feed the boiler at the front. And as the series went on I completely forgot about the water bypass system. The water bypass valve is fitted to the left hand side tank on the inside. And this is a really stupid fundamental error. I have a lot to remember when making these videos and I is well old in it these days. And here's my best excuse. At that time I was taking metformin for my type 2 diabetes. And this metformin did two things. One, it gave me diarrhoea, I won't go into that. And two, it affected my brain. I was having difficulty remembering things in the short term. So I'm really not surprised that I forgot about repiping the water system. Here I'm parting off the part finish fitting. It's a bit of a strange one this. The original water bypass valve was held into the tank with a nut inside the tank, which is inaccessible. Luckily I did manage to unscrew it ok by twisting it from side to side to lock the nut against the inside of the tank so it came off. This part of the fitting will be loctited into the hole in the tank. Or better still I may use some JB Weld. But not until it's finished. That's the parting off procedure complete. Now I've turned the part round, put it back in the chuck and I'm using a centre drill to drill the end of it. And yes I know it is moving in the chuck. This chuck doesn't always grip very tightly. But luckily, because of that, I don't break many drills. After the centre drilling, I then drill the part all the way through by using a 5.30 seconds twist drill. After this, I use the tapping size drill for a 3 8 by 32 thread. I thought it would slightly chamfer this piece of work to make sure it wasn't sharp. After that I threaded the hole using a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch tap. I screwed in a commercial steam tap. These are available from Blackgates Engineering. Now what I need to do is make a very small T-piece and here it is. The thread on the end of this is also 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. But this bit that I'm temporarily putting in place is threaded 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. Here's the principle. The pipe that carries the water from the output of the pump fits onto this thread. The union cone and nut are already on the end of the pipe that was in the engine to start with. This outlet connects to the check valve in the boiler, and this bit sticks through the hole into the tank. This clip shows the T-piece after silver soldering. Time to fit it in place. And this is where the problem started. But anyway, I thought it would be a good idea before I tackle the problem to clean up the freshly silver soldered T-piece using my Proxon motor tool in the bench mount. Now that the T-piece is looking a lot better, it's time to fit everything in position. But there was a problem. The original union nut on the pipe and the union cone was not the right size. I had two choices, one being to make a new T-piece and the other one to re-silver solder a proper union on the end of the pipe. I chose the latter option and applied some silver solder flux to the pipe, after which I fitted a union cone and silver soldered it in place. In case you're wondering what this white stuff is, it's thermal insulation material and it is really good. This allows me to use a blowtorch in a very small confined space without burning off the paint or damaging anything else. It ended up not being the neatest silver soldered joint that I'd ever made, but it will clean up. Here's a set of parts that I made to connect the T-piece to the check valve. And here, after silver soldering the union cones to the end of the pipe, I fitted it in place. The bend at the T-piece end is intentional to keep it clear of the reversing lever. 
That's one problem sorted, now here's another one. The pressure gauge in its current position is too far forward and a bit high, and I won't be able to see it when the roof's fitted. This clip shows a simple solution. I very carefully bent the siphon to move the pressure gauge's position rearward. I loosely refitted the roof in position, and as you can clearly see, the pressure gauge is visible. The next job is very simple, and surely nothing can go wrong with this. I'm going to bolt the superstructure to the running boards using four brass 4BA nuts with washers. Before doing that, I needed to make this black combing. This was always the intention, it's what holds the boiler in position. In this clip, the superstructure is fully bolted down onto the running boards, and this puts a positive pressure on the top of the boiler over where it's sat, on the special boiler mountings that I made and bolted to the frames. I didn't want to drill the boiler to mount the usual pieces of angle to it. A final check on the tightness of the 4BA nuts holding the superstructure to the running boards, and that's about it. I don't mean the end of the series, I still have to mount the injector, the steam whistle, and figure out the best way to pipe the hand pump into the circuit. Just in case you're wondering how I made the combing, I used a Stanley knife and a piece of silicone rubber tubing, but you do have to be very careful not to cut yourself. And that's it for this episode, it's really getting there now. I still need to do some slight repair to the paintwork, but the current coat is still drying. And that is it for episode number 99. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.